and welcome back to the Promotion on a Budget podcast. And this week, we're bringing you something a little bit different. Now, Duka, you're not in your usual setting. I'm in the setting that everyone's kind of got accustomed to me being in for the last few weeks. But let's firstly talk about how you are feeling because you've finally had your bubble popped. I mean, I don't know. I don't think we've had our bubble popped. Um, it was more of a sense that Watford have a new manager. Um, and yeah, it's kind of, it's that new manager syndrome. You, you know, new managers are always known to win. But on a whole, I think Watford always are going to be a tricky side to come up against a Vicarage Road. They've got the best home record in the league. Admittedly, Norwich do have the best away record in the league as well prior to um, uh, to the game. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I think a 1-0 loss isn't, you know, Norwich played poorly. So it, it was clear to see there's improvements to be made. Um, so it wasn't a sense it's, that... Yeah, it's fair to say I think it's made it a lot more interesting kind of up the top end of the league. Um, and now, obviously, the kind of what we're going to do with this one is we're not going to flap around over all of the results. There's been a lot of games that we obviously missed from having to take time away. There's been a lot of things that have happened, a lot of movement up and down the league. Um, this one, I think, for me, and I, I know you're in agreement with me on this, the massive talking point that's come out of um, of the championship in the last couple of weeks has got to be um, the fact that Watford decided to replace their manager like you touched on. Now, Ivic, we've spoken about him before. We've said about what he's capable of. We've said how he set Watford up. He always set them up to defend. They would always go kind of... They, they were very good at going ahead. You, you, you've seen it time and time again. They'll go ahead they'll make some subs but defensive subs they'll then sit back invite the pressure on and they'll throw the lead away they've shown those spells of inconsistency and ultimately they've um they've actually decided that um they would replace Ivic which was really amusing well I say I saw an amusing stat on this I'm not sure what you've kind of seen statistic wise um they actually sacked Ivic on the same number of points that they sacked Nigel Pearson on at the end of last season. That's, Obviously, it's a different a league, but realistically, the guy the guy was performing. They're in the top six. They're doing what they need to do to keep themselves on track to get back in the Premier League. Um, there's been so much kind of paper talk over all of this. There's been so much kind of uncertainty on what actually happened now. I think the main the main story, and I'm not. Um, I'll let you kind of um, talk about this bit. Is allegedly it was to do with something, um, an almost a spat, we'll call it, between him and Troy Deeney. Well, yeah, I think we we saw a, a few bits of this in Talk Sport. I believe Troy Deeney had a few words to say, um, but overall, I think yeah, I don't think sacking a player over uh, sacking a manager, sorry, over that sort of thing is really necessary. Um, it's interesting, but again, we can is it, look. Ivic really didn't do too well. Watford were were a side that surprisingly got relegated from the Premier League. Um, are only just about in the top six um, as well. It's, even after last night's victory over over Norwich, but um, yeah, it's it's just it's really it's strange, but it's also you can see why they've done it. Um, I can remember one of the games. I think it was QPR where they drew one one. Um, they went 1-0 up and, um, you know, they bossed us first half. They absolutely bossed it. You know, some of the best football they've played all season, apparently, to according to some Watford fans. And then No, I, I actually watched that game. They were very, very good. And then they second half... Good. They looked lethal. Yeah, second half all fell apart. Um, they, they they stick 11 men behind the ball and, uh, you know, QPR have the better the chances. And I think if you're going to play football like that in the Championship, you're not going to pick up a, a lot of results. Um, obviously, we have seen Watford uh, perform some masterclasses, especially over Preston, where they won 4 1. But at the same time, we're seeing Watford drop points where they really shouldn't be uh, due to just the negligence of the attack in the second half because they have a lead. Um, so, Munoz, the new, the, the new manager that's come in, um, you know, he's coming because he's got more of an attacking style of play. We saw this against Norwich last night, a very counter-attacking sort of style that can break Norwich, Norwich down, who defensively haven't been awful this season compared to what they have been. Um, and they did it really well, Watford. Um, they created a lot of clear-cut clear, clear -cut goal-scoring opportunities. We saw Andre Gray 
um, missed two absolute sitters, which he should have scored. His mother Saar scored, and he created a whole host of chances. Um, and Norwich, again, probably had more of the ball, but didn't create anything. Because what, what, one person that Ivic did leave behind was a good defensive shape. And they were very, very compact defensively and did um, did that job very well. And then going forward, they were a threat and could have easily won that game 3-0. Yeah, I mean, both obviously both sides have um, shown their quality throughout the course of the season. There's no denying that. Um, and I think that, especially in a first game from a manager, this is not, not a manager that I've ever seen take the helmet of a team before. Obviously, um, Cisco was a player um, a few years back. I've seen various clips of him playing before. Um, but whenever a new manager comes into a team, there's always that period of infancy of him trying to develop his techniques on the squad. Now, I think it was a, it was always going to be a very tough test straight away hosting the league leaders. Um, and yes, like we like we said, it could have um, been a lot bigger of a margin for Watford, but I think by the same accord, it could have very easily swung the other way, had different things happen throughout the course of the game. It's really interesting. Like I still don't understand why um, a team would sack a manager when he's quite frankly on in like he's in line to meet what's being asked of him. Ultimately, I can't imagine that Ivic was asked of anything else apart from get us back to the Premier League. Yeah. No matter how they did it, whether that be through the playoffs, whether it be through automatics, that would be what he would have been tasked with. It would be get Watford back. Because especially with all of this talk of um, stuff like wage caps coming in, the amount of quality that they have in that squad, if the wage cap comes in, and obviously a lot of the impacts of this season and at the end of last season, as we've already seen it, revenues are falling ever like they're all the time. They're constantly falling. There'll be a certain point where it will become an unsustainable um, kind of model. We see it all the time with teams that shouldn't drop out the top level with good players high paid players they keep hold of them and then they fail to go back up yeah no we, I mean see, I think the example I can think of in recent years Stoke City yeah you see Stoke City Sunderland it's, as well um, Cardiff um, I mean, even Huddersfield went, went straight down didn't they yeah exactly so yeah. we've seen this a lot but no, I mean we've we've seen those kind of we've seen those kind of things time and time of um, kind of teams failing to bounce back up. But quite frankly, Ivic was doing what was asked of him, which is why the sacking is a very peculiar one. I mean, Watford are quite frankly renowned for having a different manager every month, pretty, pretty much. I mean, it, I'm, I'm fairly sure the last few managers have only lasted a matter of kind of five, six months. So you're looking at at least two managers a year. Um, it doesn't make sense, quite frankly. Ivic debuting in English football, I can't really say he was putting too much of a foot wrong in terms of outcomes. Now, I know Watford fans may not have liked the football that he was playing, but ultimately, yes, it was dropping them points in silly places, but they were still getting results. Credit to the quality of the team, but you can't ignore a manager in what he's doing, simply put. Yeah, no, I fully agree with that. And it is it is a very strong... I mean, I would have understood if it was later in the season and the owners weren't too sure whether he was even going to get top six and then brought in an attacking manager because that's what Watford are. They like changing their managers, as, as you've said pre, uh, just now. Um, but at the same time, <laughs> there is silly places where he is dropping points. It's not worthy of a sack, but there is like reasoning there behind it. Um, and uh, I think bringing an attacking manager in Someone that who can maybe bring out the best of his Malasar, Andre Gray, Troy Deeney, um, Ken Semmer in this league um, would really benefit Watford and could see them push up the table maybe into automatics. Um, so I can see that. And I think, yeah, if it wasn't doing a bad job, but I also believe that the sacking is to make sure that you're going to get the best manager for the club and make sure you're going to actually... Uh, profit with these attacking players that they do have because they do have a threat. They do have such a threat going forward. I mean, you, even João Pedro, who didn't even feature last night. Um, and I think that for me is um, 
isn't a fair reason to sack him, but it is an understandable reason to sack Ivic to get more attacking football in and try and actually pick up results. Because Ivic, again, he was a bit... I mean, some of his decision making, like we say, it, it was a bit, it was a bit questionable at times, especially when you know, it's, yeah. it'd sit ten men behind the ball after only being one nil up. Push, I mean, we we see with um, Munoz last night, push for that second, try and get that second goal, um, kill the game off because what Watford could have easily done that, and um, yeah, it, 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 yeah, so it was definitely a ref- it would have been refreshing for Watford fans to see last night uh, Munoz play. You know, play for the win, um, so to speak, and not just settle. You know, settle for for that for the one nil win, one nil shit house um, that um, you know Ivic would have probably been happy with. Because at the end of the day, as we've seen with Watford, it can cost you your job. So, um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, let, look at it this way. Okay, I've got. I mean, I've got the table up in front of me now, and I'm kind of just. I'll analyze it solely on the top six. Um, Obviously, this, some of the statistics apply to the entire league, but the majority are kind of top six specific. If you look at the top six, Watford have scored the least goals and conceded the second least. So the only team to have conceded less than Watford are Swansea, who have conceded 12. Uh, they're obviously sat two points above them. Watford have only lost four games all season. Now, that's not a horrendous record. If you look at it, two of them have actually come quite recently in terms of um, Cardiff and Huddersfield. Now, looking at this top six, like I say, you've got a Norwich side who are recently relegated. You've got a Swansea side who aren't too long from the Premier League. They obviously made the playoffs last season. You've got Bournemouth, a recently relegated side. You've got Brentford, who made the playoff final and missed out very narrowly last season and have looked very decent for a few years and in my opinion are actually quite unlucky to not be in the Premier League Um, Watford obviously themselves sat in fifth another recently relegated Premier League team and then you've got your anomaly of Reading if you take into account the teams that I just said it's very competitive up the top now obviously we don't know if the board have seen something that we don't know about then you'd kind of understand it a bit more but if this is literally to do with the fact that he's had this falling out alleged disagreement should we call it with Troy Deeney then it's quite a questionable thing to um, relieve your manager of his duties over it Troy Deeney don't get me wrong he's a very influential player at that club he's got a big impact that we've spoken about time and time again but let's look at it in retrospect of how how this kind of shape is now going to have is going to change, like you said, and it could actually be something the board have gone right. This isn't working for what we want. Let's make a change. That could it's it's a very strange decision, but if you know all of the reasons, it could make so much sense. I just I do just want to add. Um, I'm going to pick out three of Watford's recent results in the one-one draw against Brentford which Brentford should have won, the 1-0 loss against Cardiff, and the 2-0 loss against Huddersfield. Um, I believe, I don't know if they were the past three games of Ivic, or um, I believe they were three of the past five. Um, and those three results aren't good enough. Uh, you're dropping points at home to one of your uh, rivals in promotion in Brentford. You're losing to Cardiff. Again, they were on a good run of form, but you should be losing to Cardiff, and I believe Watford were at home again. Uh, and then losing two 0 to Huddersfield isn't that isn't you, you can't do that um, if you want to um, get promoted. Um, and it's alright if it's a slip up, but it was it was a consistent run of results, so to speak. Um, so I can understand, you know, maybe he could if it could have recovered the run, but looking at his previous decision making earlier for, in the season. Would we have seen a change um, in Watford? Maybe not. So you know, bringing in uh, Munoz, which again I think itself is a di- is a very very weird decision. Uh, Munoz doesn't even have enough um, coaching badges to take Watford to the Premier League. So if Watford gets to the Premier League, um, Munoz can't manage him because he doesn't have the coaching badges for it. He can do the coaching badges during the season, but he doesn't have the coaching badges to manage in the Premier League at the minute, which is very interesting. Um, so, yeah. 
maybe that's some kind of long term vision that the board have just like they might have it might have had to have been a case of moving the goalposts. Um, quite frankly, they might have had because um, we are almost at the point that we would call mid season at the point that every team has played 23 games obviously a little bit harder in the respect that we've had a few kind of COVID postponements that are going to be coming up over the next kind of couple of game weeks the one just gone next week and potentially this could be something we're going to have to see going forward is teams playing catch up um, come the end of the season but maybe the board have seen something and gone right okay this isn't working for us if I look at um, Watford's results now they were knocked out of the cup um, by Newport under Ivic. They looked poor in that game. They did not provide anything. They looked second best to a team that played their football in the fourth division. Okay, yes, Watford didn't exactly chuck out a starting team, but if you look at some of the names that they did actually play, you've got um, Glenn Murray started, Craig Dawson started, James Garner started, uh, Pesetto played. Even the goalkeeper, is their, he is their second choice goalkeeper. It wasn't like for a team that's just come down from the Premier League, it wasn't a result that they should have gone with. But they've not actually been able to string a, a run of more than three wins together um, at all in the league this season. They've been very, very inconsistent in gaining results. And like we said, they've dropped points where they shouldn't have dropped points. Um, this spans back to the start of the season. Um, I think the first kind of one that I look at really and go, yeah, you shouldn't be dropping points. Um, I think on paper, it's got to be the game they lost to Reading um, at the Medeski. That was their first loss of the season. And realistically, I still don't see Reading as that kind of top end championship side. I still yeah. see them as kind of one of the teams that just hovers around mid table. Um, obviously, a recent time, we've seen them finish a lot lower down. Um, but I think you look, at, you look at that, and I mean, I went into that game thinking, oh, we're, we're going to get absolutely taken to taken to the shops here. Um, and even going on after that, they've dropped points to Bournemouth, they've, um, who obviously are another promotion rival, so dropping more points to teams around them. But then they've done things like losing to Barnsley and drawing with Wickham to teams that, um, on paper, are expected to be down the bottom of the league. Obviously, like we said previously, Barnsley are kind of surpassing those expectations. They actually find themselves in the top half. It's a very kind of strange situation, I think, that Watford find themselves in. And quite frankly, I think the next kind of few months, I would say up until kind of the start of March, are crucial for them. Obviously, we know how many fixtures are normally played in April. Um, they've just come out of December probably not best happy with how it's gone of um De- december's always one of those busy months again in football teams always playing um, you risk injuries you risk tiredness um if you hit a bad run of form that bad run of form can stick with you for a few games but quite frankly for, um watford in this case this is now now is crunch time for them this is going to be absolutely huge bringing the manager like we've said with no english league experience I think, quite frankly, it will be make or break. And like I've said, with how tight it is at the top, if it is break, they could find themselves slipping down the league. And that's something that Watford fans will not want to see. But if it's anything to go how they played yesterday, I don't think they will be slipping down. They looked uh, defensively solid, going forward very, very strong. Um, They just need to find that clinicality. Obviously, they did score yesterday, so... but. Like, uh, for instance, uh, Andre Gray missed two absolute sitters. You know, if he if they can get him firing goals, I think Watford's chances will look a lot bigger to get promoted. Um, realistically, whether that's for automatics or through the playoffs, I think automatics. I mean, trying to knock Bournemouth off that spot is going to be very difficult, and trying to knock, uh, knock Norwich off top spot is also going to be very difficult. Yeah, Norwich lost uh, at the weekend, but Norwich will pick up results against the majority of teams in this division. However, um, uh, yeah, I think I think we'll see Watford in the playoffs under Munoz this season. Yeah, I mean, I've never kind of thought that Watford aren't the kind of team that should shouldn't they deserve to be at the top end quite frankly they've got the quality to um and like we said it's a very strange sacking of Ivic 
but it could be a very interesting thing to see um, how this whole situation with Cisco Munoz coming in develops over the coming game weeks. Obviously, they've got a bit of time off now because their game with Millwall has been postponed. But they'll look to go into the new year and as far as the team and the board will be concerned, they will want to be pushing on for automatics and they will want to be putting up a fight against the likes of Bournemouth, Norwich, Swansea, Brentford, the teams that are up there well, and have got that quality. Even some of these dark... What about Reading? I'll, I'll wait until we get through the January transfer window. <laughs> but speaking of the January transfer window... There's going to be what we, I think we're both in agreement on this. We're going to look to kind of get a um, bit of a transfer special going. So obviously keep keep an eye out for what comes out of that over the coming days. Um, but well, little spoiler into what I'm talking about is that Omar Richards are out, only out and out senior left back, maybe on his way out the club, um, having six months left on his deal and attracting Premier League interest, and Michael Elise attracting European powerhouse interest. No, I'm not talking about Arsenal. I'm talking about the likes of AC Milan, Real Madrid, and Barcelona. So, like I said, we'll go into that when we get to the transfer special. That's why I don't want to talk about Reading right now. Um, this, I think, it was a big thing that we needed to talk about and we needed to cover. And I think we've kind of glazed over the top of the surface of what this, what we kind of see this as. Um, it's a very strange situation, sacking a manager when he's doing, on paper, doing quite well. If you look at the results, then you kind of maybe begin to understand it a bit more, but not worthy of a sacking. Um, it's one to kind of definitely keep an eye on. And I think this kind of really sets the precedent for us to be able to talk about this more over the coming weeks. Um, but like I say, we can't say too much more on it right now because it's such an infancy of an incident and a new manager coming in. We've seen him play 90, well, we've seen him manage for 90 minutes of football. Um, it's very hard to not end up going around in circles over all of this. So I think that's where we're probably going to leave it for this week unless you've got anything else you want to add, mate. No, that, that's it. Um, right, guys, so... Uh, just watching please like and subscribe go follow our socials leave a comment down below on what you want us to talk about regarding the championship in the upcoming weeks uh tickle that notification bell as well and uh, we'll see you next time see you later